Okay, I wanted to share with y'all basically how I made a mold and what I did. Um, we're going to basically simplify this to where you don't have to watch the entire process. Um, but I do have that filmed, so if you want to see the process, leave a comment in the video. Um, this right here is a double-layered carbon fiber top hatch for a Traxxas Spartan. You know what a Spartan lid looks like? This is what this is. Now, it's not 100% finished. I do have two coats of epoxy on it. There are a couple imperfections in it. Um, you can see kind of right, right there, there's a tiny little bit of a hole. Um, so each little imperfection like that, I have to go back and try to use five minute epoxy and level it to where I can fill that void. Now the goal here is to try to use this piece, but also pull a uh, fiberglass mold from this piece. I couldn't pull a mold off of the plastic piece because um, it would be probably it would deform it. So my thought was let's make one out of carbon fiber and then I can pull a, a fiberglass mold from it once I spray PVA on this and once I get it all the way done. But then I'll probably cut this out and use this piece. Now this is just a test because I didn't want to ruin the one that I actually wanted to mold. Now what I did, I did two layers and then I also added that strip right there in the center to give it some structural support. But other than that, it actually turned out really good for the first time I ever made a mold. And I'll show you over here what I did. Now, this is the piece that I'm going to be molding. This is out off of basically my Mystic 29. So a Blackjack 29 or a Miss Geico 29, this is your top piece. And if anybody owns this, you'll know how brittle the plastic gets around the front and around the back or anywhere, you know, anywhere on this piece because it's so old so how do you mold it if it's made out of plastic because if you did um, polyester resin it's going to get too hot it's going to deform it and believe it or not this is not a flat bottom it has a curve like convex angle to it that conforms to the hull so what I did here I made a box out of wood and then I basically filled it full of plastic on the bottom. I just used regular old signage to, to gain some, some elevation there. And then I took this sign. If you can see how the sign is kind of curved, I took it and glued it to the plastic. To where hopefully my mold, it will get me that angle. Even if it doesn't, it's going to give me a square edge to where then I'll have more um, lip than I need and then I can actually dremel in the edge once I pull it out of the mold. It may be flat, but then I'll have enough material to where I can then fix it. So right now, I've got three layers of PVA on this. Typically, that's white. Um, I learned you cannot brush on PVA. You must spray on PVA. Um, I learned that from my last mold. There is my last mold right here. So basically what happened was I'd brushed it on and the PVA had absorbed into um, what I had used to make this mold. Now, Well, as I, I was able to get my part released, but unfortunately, because I used drywall plaster, the mold itself wasn't strong enough. So basically, it pulled up and broke at the layer of the plaster. Um, I think that was because I had PVA on the plaster itself, so there was no getting around that. So I learned next time, don't use PVA on top of plaster. Um, you know, on my original part at least they sell small crafting plaster of paris and if you read on the back of plaster or paris um what does it say basically it says it right here it says if you need to use dap wall uh plaster wall patch to fill or conceal cracks or use dap spackling products so basically you can use that as far as what this is saying. I believe if I could find this in a larger container, it would be more helpful. But since I had already pulled a mold before, this is what I had used. I had used the 20 minute version of the joint compound. 
and it basically flashed too fast. It cured too quickly. I needed more time for it to stay kind of a creamy pudding uh, like mixture to where it would have time to conform to all the spots um, of these plastic pieces. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna mix this up in a bucket and I'm gonna pour it into my mold box. All right, well, I've taken my 45 minute plaster. I've mixed it with water. You can tell the consistency that it is. Maybe a little liquidy, but what I learned on the last one, I had it really thick and it didn't conform as well as I'd like it to. So my thought was, since I let this stuff sit overnight anyways, I'm gonna mix it really slow, really well. But the thinner it is, I think the better it will conform to all of the fine nooks and crannies. I think regardless it's gonna set up. I have a, another bag right here of stuff. If, it, if I made it too thin, I could add that to it. But I think that is, um, that's okay consistency. It's just a little bit thinner than typical uh, drywall mud. But this really isn't drywall mud, this is plaster. I've got other type of plaster coming. I've got some gypsum plaster coming, but that was all special order. Try my best to get all the clumps out and allow all the air bubbles to surface. And then we're gonna go pour it in the uh, in my little mold box. All right, say goodbye, because we're about to pour that into that. All right, now, ideally, if you had something that vibrated, that would be the best thing. But what I like to do is just go around and tap it. This will help it conform to all the little holes and corners. I don't know how lucky I was to get a box that fits this stuff perfectly. I just really lucked out on that. I made a box for my parts. And then it happened to fit an 18-pound bag of plaster once you put water in it perfectly. What I'll do is once I set the camera down, I'll get another one of these hammers and I'll go around and I'll tap it on both sides. And I'll just do this for about five minutes. It's just allowing a little bit of vibration to go through it. Allows the plaster to find its way into every other little spot. They do this with concrete when they pour concrete forms. They, they send a big vibrator tool in there and they vibrate the liquid concrete into all the nooks and crannies. So the same, same aspect applies here. Hopefully we'll be able to open it up in a few hours. And I'm going to show you what I have to do in order to open it up. So we take this piece here. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. So what I like to do on the low spot, I like to take this and set it like that and then I will screw this down and I don't want to close that gap because I don't want to put pressure on the mold and crack it and then the same for over here and then I'll basically flip it over and then I'll take this off and then I'll have access to my mold we're gonna take this off together so I've unscrewed it I have no idea how it's gonna look okay that's a good thing so my bottom layer of garage sale signs that I taped together seem to hold pretty good. Looks like I've got a little bit of a depression here. Crack. So now that I have exposed it to air, it should dry a little bit more. And theoretically, once it cools, it should contract a little bit, which should help it uh, you know the piece in the center to to release So we're gonna give it a little bit more time don't want to rush these things And then we'll see what it looks like when we pull it out I've given it about two hours to dry the lid a little bit and what I did I took a putty knife and I went around the edge and I pulled off the uh, the purple tape that I had there because these pieces here were slightly smaller I had to cut the rim around it and then once I had cut cleanly all the way around it, yes, there's a pistachio shell there. There was like a little give, so I threw some shells under there is what I had. <laughs> and then basically I took my air gun and I went underneath it. And 
and I can get the piece to float. So that's how I know it's uh, it's lifted up. And I have yet to get it all the way out, but I keep wiggling it. And basically I'll find a spot where it's hitting. I think it's hitting right here. And then I take my putty knife and I slide it out. Oh, cool. Look at that. We got it out. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And luckily, look, we saved that piece. Yeah. Pistachio. Okay, cool. And just like that, we have a mold. Okay, so I'm going to have to let this dry, and then we're going to clean it up. You can see a little bit of stuff right there on the edge that we'll have to clean up, but not bad. Not bad may have to get in there i think the epoxy will probably fill that in uh pretty good but once it dries what i do is i take a wet sponge one of them wet sponge brushes and i'll go in here and i'll smooth all that out and transition it really good because basically if we look here let's see you see where that lip is so that little that little lip is actually where it needs to stop so anything above that lip is all waste material anyways with the lips kind of dirty over there. But it shouldn't matter. Alright. Yeah, that is sick. That turned out excellent. Alright. Good deal. Very, very happy with that. Okay. So I'm not going to touch it. I didn't ruin my piece. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Still a little bit of PVA on it. Not bad. But, uh, yeah, the mold release did its job. So, the next process will be basically repeating what I did with this. But, the, instead of laying it um, two sheets in there and just doing it by hand, I'm going to lay two sheets in there and I'm going to slip a giant vacuum bag over top of it. And then I'm going to put my peel ply on top of it and my, bre my uh, breather bleeder cloth on top of it and make sure it's filled with epoxy coat it all nice and good and then bring my vacuum in here and suck that thing down and hopefully hopefully it conforms to it pretty well but i'm going to end the video here it's gotten quite long so if you want to see the final product that will come out in a future video so thank you all for watching if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace out.